Hello and welcome back. This week we're going full geek. It's a question that comes up from time to time and I think it deserves some investigation and an answer. The question is, can you turbocharge a naturally aspirated 4DR5? Yes, probably. Which leads us to a, some follow-up questions and some corollaries. Is the 4DR5 turbo engine the same as the naturally aspirated version? No, it isn't. The 4DR5T is different in a few but fundamental ways. The compression ratio is actually higher than the NA version being 21.5 to 1 versus only 20 to 1. The camshaft duration is quite a bit shorter. The fuel pump is a VE type, not a P pump. The fuel injection timing is radically different. The fuel injectors are bigger. So all of that means that it's not really feasible to upgrade a non-turbo unit to complete 4DR5T spec. So let's just break the differences down a little bit. First up, the turbo pistons are different. They have a different crown design, and this is where the higher compression ratio comes from. The naturally aspirated 4DR5 unit has a camshaft with these opening and closing specs. They come out to the 4DR5 turbo cam having quite a bit shorter duration. Is the naturally aspirated cam going to work okay in a turbo application? So if we add a turbo to a 4DR5, then is the cam going to be okay? Actually, yes. The early 4DR6 engine actually uses the exact same camshaft as the naturally aspirated 4DR5, the exact same part. During the production of the 4DR6, they changed the cam specs to the shorter duration and made some other changes, most likely in an effort to reduce emissions. And that this is the same camshaft that's then used in the 4DR5 turbo unit. The longer duration cam for the naturally aspirated for, and for the 4DR6, the early 4DR6, worked just fine in the turbo application. So it will work just fine for a turbo 4DR5. Will the NA 4DR5 fuel pump be sufficient in this application? I think so. The fuel delivery on the naturally aspirated models is given as a maximum of 46 to 49 cc's per 1000 pump strokes, and that's a, that's a maximum load of course. The turbo version is given as 51 cc's plus or minus 1 cc. The maximum stroke on the pump plungers is 10 millimeters on the NA version and 10.2 on the turbo item, so it's a, it's a tiny difference. The big difference is that the 4DR5 naturally aspirated pump does not seem to have a boost compensator, and that would increase fueling uh, under boost and vice versa. And what I think that does is it helps to reduce uh, soot before the turbo is spooled or during spool up. Um, so to use the NA fuel pump as is, you would want to adjust the fuel screw up a little bit to get the best power which would have the side effect of maybe making your idle a little bit high and or the exhaust being a bit more sooty off boost what about the injection timing well that's a good question the 4dr5 naturally aspirated unit injects fuel at 18 degrees before top dead center the early 4dr6 sprays at 11 degrees before top dead center and the later ones at 9 degrees. Bear in mind though that the 4DR6 is a direct ejection engine so we can't really directly compare those two figures. The 4DR5 turbo sprays fuel at 5 degrees after top dead center. I believe that that's for emission uh, reasons. It would help to decrease oxides of nitrogen for example and i think that for power you'd be best off injecting before top dead center 
but you'd need to experiment and find what works best. You can't run 18 degrees before top dead center with, on a turbo because the increased cylinder pressure. So you're going to have to back timing off somewhere from there, but I would start it around perhaps uh, 12 degrees before top dead center and then see if advancing the time further get, gets you any more power. You can also measure exhaust gas temperature at peak load to find the, the best injected timing, bearing in mind that lower EGT is better. Will the 4DR5 turbo injectors work on the NA heads? I think so. And the good news is that, they, that those injectors are common with the 4D30, which is a lot more common and a lot more readily available. The, I put the part numbers in the description below. Don't even think about f using 4DR6 injectors. The opening pressure on those is 100 kilograms per square centimeter higher. So I don't think that they will even open uh, with your NAP pump. I don't think they would fit the head anyway. What about an exhaust manifold? Well, the 4DR5 turbo and 4DR6 have identical manifold gaskets and the manifolds look to be identical and I think that they would both bolt right up to the NA head. I think that the only difference between the, uh, the turbo and the NA heads are the uh, EGR system ports, but pay attention. The early 4DR6 manifold has 40 millimeter runners, that's in the internal diameter, and the later ones only have 34 millimeter runners. So if you're looking for power, get the earlier 4DR6 manifold. You will not notice any turbo lag, even with the bigger manifold. Don't, don't worry about that. I put the power numbers again uh, for both of those in the description. Are the 4DR6 and 4DR5 turbos the same? Basically, yes, they are. Um, the 4DR6, uh, the early 4DR6 has a generic TDO4-1 unit. The later one is a TDO4-7B. Uh, there was a running change during production, but I think all of the parts are interchangeable. The compressor outlet on the 4DR5 turbo is clocked upwards to meet the charge pipe to the intercooler. It's that it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't feed horizontally. And I'm not sure that you can clock the 4DR6 turbo in that way because of the wastegate actuator. I've put the part numbers for all of the turbos in the description below. The turbos are interchangeable in that they have the same flanges and it's only the compressors that are different between the two, the, five, the 4DR5 turbo having a slightly more modern aero on the compressor. The system overboost relief valves are identical on 4DR6 and 4DR5 turbos, um, meaning that they both run the same boost pressure and they just fit in a different location. On the 4DR6, it's in the charge pipe that crosses the valve cover. On the 4DR5 turbo, it's on the intake manifold. I also believe that the TDO412T turbo from the L200 with the 4D56 engine is also a bolt-up turbo. Now the question, um, on your non-turbo engine, how are you going to supply oil to the turbo and drain it? I don't know. I haven't seen a 4DR5 NA block to tell you if it has an oil supply that's just blanked off or if it's just not drilled um, on that block. And if it doesn't have an oil supply that you can just easily tap into, then you might want to look at the oil supply for the fuel pump on the other side of the engine and then say run braided hose over the top to the turbo. Just remember to use the correct banjo to feed the turbo. The block may or may not have an oil drain cast into it. And if not, then you're going to need to drill a hole in the oil pan above the oil level and plug the return in there. Bear in mind that 99 times out of 100, if someone is complaining about a smoky turbo, meaning that the oil from the turbo is leaking either into the compressor side or into the hot side, it's because the turbo oil isn't draining out properly. It needs to have a straight, unrestricted drain, and it cannot be under an oil level. So it has to it has to drain into the sump above oil level for the surface. Okay, hope that answers. Okay, so I hope that answers the question. 
if it created more questions, leave a comment. If you have another question, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.